All right, for those of you who have been following my videos, well, first, thank you, and keep the comments coming. I love chatting with you guys. But, sword review. Now, you've seen me do some reviews recently, maybe, where I have reviewed swords I consider out of my wheelhouse. My wheelhouse being Japanese and Chinese swordsmanship, martial arts. Last year of isolation and a lot of physical therapy, uh, exercise rehab here, I got hardcore back into those arts and also started cross-training, investigating European swords and Hema. And the more I do so, the more I find similarity between them that's making cross-training very, very familiar and comfortable. So, but I'm, gonna, I'm covering that in some other videos. But when we're talking about practical, pragmatic swordsmanship, yeah, they have a lot more in common than are different, and I'm really loving it. But let's talk about swords. Cold Steel English Backsword. Reviewed it recently. Gave it mostly a good review with a couple of problems. I'll revisit those real quick today. But if I was going to update that video in one sentence, the sentence would be this. Since I made that video, I have been having a hard time putting this down. It just feels that good to me. I talked about how I'm kind of Goldilocksing my way through European swords, trying to find just that right one for me. Well, this, this checks a lot of those boxes. Is it going to replace my katana? Well, no, absolutely not. But I did a quick video recently on different ways to wield a katana. I can use this with one-handed katana techniques. It's perfectly fine. And when it comes to Chinese swordsmanship, I can use this as a Tao or a Jen very effectively. The biggest barrier to all of that is, well, the, the, the barrier. One of the criticisms that Chinese and Japanese swords often get from outsiders as they seem to have little to no hand protection. Well, this, this would be the opposite. And maybe you guys can understand why, you know, given the year plus I've been having, um, I might appreciate a little extra, <laughs> a little extra hand protection. Does it get in the way? Yes, of certain things, absolutely, but I've been figuring out ways to work around it. And we'll also talk about carrying different kinds of swords, and yeah, this is, this is bulky, but I'll talk about that in a later video. Anything else go wrong with the sword since I reviewed it last? Yeah, well, one, one significant concern I had. Still solid, still cuts well, no problems with that. But when I was talking about the guard, I described, you know, you've got basically a cut sheet of steel. Thick steel, it is solid, nothing's budged. But um, they left some really nasty points, two on each side, pointing back towards the user. And you'll notice now that they're kind of curled over, not quite like ram's horns. Maybe I'll improve that aesthetically later. But I had to do something about it immediately because just, yeah, I was practicing or trying to practice uh, fast drawing like Iaido, and it got me. Um, I didn't get hurt, just a scratch. But let's say I need a new shirt. So that had to be fixed immediately. So I would I would actually consider that a safety issue with the sword. But like I said, still loving the sword. Not know so much in certain ways and we'll we'll compare and contrast because I thought, well okay, time on my hands, internet. What else is out there in the way of uh, basket hilt and back swords that, that might be better than this? And well spoiler in the title already, you know I went and tried the Hanway version. Now, maybe you're looking at getting a basket hilt or a back sword to add to your collection or your practice, or maybe you've already got one of these and you're thinking about getting the other one. So I'm going to kind of compare them as I review this one. First off, let's get the price out of the way. The cold steel is cheaper, significantly so. I got the cold steel on Amazon for about $250. This was $365. I had a hard time finding it. I'm having a hard time finding a lot of swords. I keep reviewing swords and giving good reviews, and then no one can find them. Things are selling out all over the place. I, I, apparently, I'm not the only one on this path this year. So hopefully stuff will get restocked and won't just be gone forever. But $100 difference. I wound up finding this thing from, of all places, Chicago Knife Works in Virginia. Not, not Illinois. For my non-USA fans, um, Chicago's in Illinois. Virginia's three states. 
further in the other direction from me. So I, th I thought that was a little interesting. But their price was good for something of this price. They give you um, free couple day shipping. That's a nice touch. And their customer service was excellent. So recommend Chicago Knife Works. Add them to my list of, of trusted vendors. But is it worth $115-ish more than the other one? Well, same versus different. Let's take a look at the friendly end. And you're going to notice something visually right off in terms of the size of the grip in the basket. Cold Steel's bigger. Slightly longer grip. Really only just a little over a quarter of an inch. But there's more room in the basket. And the grip on the Cold Steel is significantly stouter. So if you like a stouter grip, you're going to want the Cold Steel. If you're also worried about being able to fit your hands in the basket, you're going to want the cold steel. However, I've got plenty of room for my hand in here. I can shift it around in all sorts of grips and pretty much never make contact with the basket. So that's it's not a problem. Cold steel has the synthetic, well, ray skin, shark skin, whatever you want to call that grip. It's basically just, you know, reasonably well done, knobby plastic. The wire wrap around it is nice and tight. There were some sharp bits that I had to deal with where the wire, you know, went into the plastic well, badly, but like I said, everything has been, remains solid, and yeah, let's talk about this one. Skinnier grip, real ray skin. One minor disappointment, the websites show it as being kind of ivory, and it may look that way in this in this lighting, but in person, it's it's dark brown. So I, I was a little disappointed in the color, but that's, that's easily changeable. The wire around it is much thinner, and in certain places, it, it, definitely, it definitely slips and slides. So you can hear it, right? Not catastrophically, but mm, there are, however, some nice copper wire braids around the top and the bottom, very attractive. There was, however, a fish hook of stray wire through the top one I had to pull out with a pair of pliers, but since then I haven't had any hot spots. Speaking of hot spots, the guard that cost me a shirt also has just a lot of sharp edges all over it because it's just straight cut sheet steel. This one's the opposite. It's all nice and rounded and friendly. It's a casting. I don't know what. It's solid. I've, I've tried to dent it, bend it. It's, it's tough stuff, whatever it is. It's not magnetic. It might still be stainless steel. It's, it's painted to look like iron, but that is paint. So is the gold. That's a gold leaf paint, and it's, it's, it's kind of all over. They did a good job of, of coverage to give it kind of a, a rustic feel. The guard is, like I said, it's really thick. It is perforated in the shell. A very even pattern of holes. My only issue I have with that is that depending on my fingernails, sometimes I catch it just wrong and I get sort of a cheese grater effect. But if it continues to bother me, I'll just put a leather bolster in there. It's an easy, easy fix. Everything's solid. Interesting thing, even though you, you've got the smaller grip, a couple of things that actually I, th I think I like a little bit better. One thing is, if you can see in here, the collar at the top of the blade, what I'd call a fuchi on a katana on a cold steel, is just round and plain. This one's got some, it's kind of an anvil shape with flat sides that just, my, my thumb and forefinger just sink in there just right. So I kind of like the way that feels. Also, speaking of, of feel, the pommel on this one, instead of being perfectly round, is, is convex in here concave. I always get those backwards. Concave, right? Okay. With the rounded bars, and that just combines to create a space where the edge of my hand will sink in there and just, just feels good, just right in there. So certain things about the cold steel grip, the, the thickness of it and the security of the wire, bonus cold steel. Certain things about this, though, I really like as well. Let's move on to some other concerns. Well, you're already hearing something, right? What is that? That's the scabbard. Now, cold steel scabbards, I gotta give them props for their scabbards. Retention and fit is usually great. However, I wasn't crazy about the back sword scabbard because it wasn't rigid. Didn't have that reinforcement in the middle of it. And in place of that, it had the plastic liners running all the way down. Great retention, too great. Um, drawing it and resheathing it 
a literal drag. So no quick drawn from that sword, but it ain't falling out. So can't complain about that. This is the opposite. It's um, it's kind of a tube. I don't think it's wood. I think it's actually fiberglass covered in leather. You've got the throat and, and the shape, the same kind of blackened holy pattern, for lack of a better term. You've got the same kind of hook for a belt or a frog. It's all nice, but yeah, no retention. Now, when I first got it, there was something resembling retention in that I couldn't get the sword out of the scabbard or put it back in, and every time I did, the sword would come out with sticky goo all over it. Now, not what you're thinking. As I mentioned in the review of the Cold Steel, it came slathered in goo all over. It took me a long time to clean it. This one had a, just a nice coat of oil. This, this was glue. So I got into the scabbard with a rifle rod, rifle cleaning rod, with a 22 caliber brush on it, which has become my go-to scabbard checker clearing tool, and wound up pulling out a bunch of tape, like scotch tape and electrical tape. It was just a bunch of just fragments of sticky tape shoved down in there. Um, once I got it out, everything was nice and smooth, but yeah, there's, there's no, it, it's loose, it rattles, there's no retention. Now what you'll see here is at the top of the, of the shell guard, you've got these little ears, they're not quite languettes on either side, and they wedge down into the mouth of the scabbard, but they don't really hold anything. So, doesn't also make a very good seal, so that's, that's, huh, anyway. Moving on to the blade and the rest of the dynamics. Blade length on both are very close. 32 inches for the cold steel, 32 and three quarter inches for the Hanwei. Weight, oh boy. Two pounds, eight ounces for the cold steel. I was a little concerned because it's a couple of ounces heavier than is comfortable for me, but the balance point on that sword is 3.75 inches, so you don't feel it, or at least I don't feel it. It's a very handy, maneuverable, quick sword. So the weight doesn't bother me. Two pounds, eight ounces. Three pounds, four ounces. If I'm doing the math right, it's 12 ounces. Yeah. Balance point, three inches. So I don't necessarily feel it. Now, when I'm training with it and working with it for a while, I get tired faster, but when it comes to the way it feels, it only feels marginally heavier than the other one, not, not 12 ounces worth. And that's definitely a bonus for, for the cold steel. And a lot of that is about, as you're about to see, how the blade is made. Now, I complained about the cold steel. Take a quick look at that one again. It's, it's a perfectly fine functional blade that I've sharpened and it's held an edge, but a couple things I didn't like about it. Well, first of all, it's really simple. It's single plane, triangular cross section, which is very functional. But obviously one of the things you can see right off the bat is machine polish finish makes it look like a chrome car bumper. It's, it's not my favorite thing. The fullers, it's got a double fuller, but they're just very very undefined you know there's no no crisp edges on anything did not come with a good edge had to put an edge on it um no back edge whatsoever you'll notice that the false edge on this one it's just, just a very narrow bevel which is very similar to a lot of tang dynasty dao i've seen so th that's not unfamiliar to me and but yeah there was no edge at all on there so i put a bit of an edge on there once it was sharpened it's fine but check this out the bend it's a fairly stiff blade, but it's got a little bend and flex to it. You'll notice the bend is, is mostly even through the middle. Also consider the width of this blade edge to spine. It's a little bit fatter than the, than the Hanwei, as you're about to say. So, Hanwei. What about the Hanwei? I said a little bit narrower, but first of all, let's look at that flex. Yeah, a lot more towards the tip. Tells me this sword probably has better taper and temper. So bonus Hanway. Steel, cold steel, 1055. It's one of their favorites. And so far, the 1055 cold steels have held up just fine. No no complaints about their steel. It's, it's tough and resilient and not something you have to worry about abusing. This, as far as I can tell from research, is... 
Hanwei's favorite 1566. This is what they use in a lot of the katanas, so bonus there. It seems to be really good, decently hard, holds, holds a good edge. Did it come with an edge? No. <laughs> Butter knife on the back, nothing. A couple of millimeters of blunt, just, just like the cold steel. So yeah, both of them had to spend some time on the fine sanding belts, but now cuts just fine. How comparing the two, they both cut about the same. Good, good cutters. Nothing wrong with that. They're both sturdy. They both take impact. They're both solid. Can't complain about either one that way. But okay, so that that car bumper finish on the cold steel. This is this is kind of the opposite. There's a lot of opposites between these swords. It was described as antiqued finish, and I expected something maybe like a stone wash. But this is this is lumpy. It's 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 kind of like rhino liner is what it looks like. Now I expect that'll make a good solid finish, very very uh, scratch resistant, and so far it has been. But it's it's actually hard to clean. It's hard for me to get gunk off of it because it's so it's so uneven, pebbly. I don't know how you want to call it. Definition of the blade in terms of the way it's shaped and crafted, much better, but. Hanway, I expect more, and I didn't quite get it. Okay, so what's more and what, what didn't I get? Well, instead of a single plane, this is very much like what I'm used to in Katana, in terms of like a Shinogi Zukiri, where you've got um, a separate edge plane and ridge plane. You've also got a single bohi. Well, it's not a bohi, it's a fuller. I have trouble not using Katana terms. Anyway. It is a lot more defined than the um, the cold steel, but it, it's it's not what I expected from Hanwei. I mean, any halfway decent katana with a bohi is just going to have a much nicer fuller than this. It's just it's just not quite it doesn't pop. It's not quite as even as I expected it to be. So that just it feels sloppy. Same thing with some of the planes. Now, this really comes into play when we're looking at that back edge false edge. It has its own bevel, which then gives the last quarter of the sword a diamond cross section. Really cool, very pleasing, but when you look at it close, you realize that ridge line is not straight at all. It waves all over the place. So yeah, it looks very handmade, which I guess might appeal to you, but again, Hanway, guys, I, I just expect more doesn't affect the function of the sword and from a distance it's not noticeable but yeah when I look at the blade close I go yeah this is just not very precise but feels good in the hand functional it's interesting that extra weight and the distribution like I said it gives me a better sense of blade presence than the cold steel especially when I'm moving it from the hilt trying to keep my point online it almost feels like something has a hold of the point of my sword and is keeping it staying put which is kind of cool and yes as i mentioned i do get tired faster wheeled in this one because yeah it is heavier just doesn't feel that way in the moment so they feel different but is one significantly better than the other well i would say overall aesthetics fit finish detail certain things about the way it feels I would give the win to the Hanway. But the Cold Steel is perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with the Cold Steel. It's just not as fancy. But then a lot of European swords aren't. As I compare Katana to Euro swords, you know, most Katana are pretty finely put together in terms of even some of the, the least expensive reproductions. In terms of fit, finish, detail, quality, a lot of European swords, even the really expensive ones, they kind of frankly look like hood ornaments to me. I mean, they're basic and they're functional and they're well fit and put together and they function well, but they just lack that fancy. This has some of the fancy. This has some of the fancy, the, the, the detail, the aesthetics. But there are a couple of places where I look at it and I go, yeah, I, I would get more out of a $100 katana than this. But I'll still like it. And I'm still going to use it. So, like them both. Don't regret my purchases. So, I 
probably was completely unhelpful in this review and comparison, but hopefully I gave you some useful information. I'll try to I'll try to throw in some pictures here and there to give you some closer looks at some of these things. But um, till next time, thank you, and I hope to see you again.